It may not have ended toe-to-toe -to, -toe to match the big Vegas boxing match between Mayweather and Pacquiao, but Alliance Trust's battle with hedge fund Elliott attracted lots of attention and ultimately ended in a victory for the American activist investor. Now, having initially asked shareholders to vote against Elliott's proposals, Alliance Trust caved in on the day before its annual general meeting, set for late April, and agreed to appoint two new directors to its board, both suggested by Elliott. The company also said it would accelerate its plan to find a further independent non-executive director. The question now is, will all stakeholders, shareholders and staff, as well as investors in the Elliott Fund, benefit from this intervention? As the chart for Alliance Trust suggests, the early signs are encouraging, but there's a long way to go. Hello, I'm Ross Mould, AJ Bell's Investment Director, and this week I'm going to look at so-called activist investors, who they are, what they do, and how you can assess whether their funds may be suitable for your portfolio. So, who are they? In general, there are four types of shareholders. One, passive investors. When they don't like what they see, they can either sell a stock or simply avoid it. Two, stewards who enjoy a constructive dialogue with management teams and plan to own for the long term. Three, proactive investors. They'll engage with company bosses, vote for or against the annual general meetings, but will ultimately sell a stock if they're really not happy. And then fourth, you get the activists, the subject of this video. They often seek representation on a board or even take a hands-on approach to running a company to unlock the value they consider to be there. Now, many of these funds would rather be suggestivists work behind the scenes to effect change and improve operational financial performance. But if they feel management isn't listening or not up to the job, then they can go public and voice their discontent loudly, even introducing resolutions at AGMs, just as Elliot did at Alliance Trust. So that's who they are. Now let's look at what they want. And in the end, that's the same as any shareholder, including you. Improved total returns from capital gains, dividends, or a combination of the two. Now when an activist gets involved, they tend to look for at least one of four things. Operational changes, such as putting in new management, closing or restructuring poorly performing units. Financial angles, special dividends, higher payouts or share buybacks. Strategic options, such as asset disposal, spin-offs or even looking for a bidder to take the company out. And finally, better governance, where boardroom pay is reined in and the interests of management and investors are better aligned. Now, Elliott's advance on Alliance Trust covered quite a few of those bases and the share price has already responded. But this isn't to say activists get it right all the time. Intercontinental Hotels didn't respond to Mark Arto Capital's calls to merge with a larger rival, and the share still did well, while Sandell got nowhere fast with rail to bus giant First Group and its shares have careered lower, as this chart shows. Now, this may help explain why not everyone approves of activists. Detractors will argue they encourage short-termism. They mean that a shareholder with a relatively small stake can end up exerting undue influence on strategy, and also that management can be distracted from their real job, which is running the company day to day. Now, these are all valid concerns, and activists may not sue everyone, especially as they can sometimes use a lot of debt to gear up returns, and they tend to run very few positions at once, so there's little protection from diversification if anything goes wrong. So, you must therefore do your homework on an activist to ensure that they fit with your overall portfolio strategy, target returns, time horizon, and appetite for risk. And they're something that only you can know. Now, if you do feel an activist fund might work for you, there are at least three listed in London from which to choose. Third Point Offshore, which is a feeder fund for Daniel Loeb's master third point fund in New York. Sherborne Investors, run by well-known activist manager Edward Bramson, and the AIM quoted Crystal Amber, which has just begun to agitate for management change at film and television studio specialist Pinewood. Each chart shows you their performance since listing to give a long-term perspective on how they've done. Now, thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.